Hi, I'm Shandra Prophet. And I'm Jeremiah Prophet. Welcome to this episode of Prophet's Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. That's right, we are going to feature our first body off restoration on an FJ80 today. This thing is totally spectacular in every single nook and cranny, so check it out. Hey guys, we've got some great new t-shirts out and sweatshirts and hoodies and tank tops and all that kind of stuff. And because Cruise Moab Week is coming, we've got the website set up to give you discounts on all of our merch uh, this coming week, Cruise Moab. So let's check that out. We've programmed the website to give five to $10 off per shirt in honor of Cruise Moab from April 23rd through May 1st. So get your merch now. This 1994 FZJ80 Land Cruiser is one lucky Land Cruiser. It belongs to the original owner, and after years and years of service to his family, he decided he would treat it to the highest level of restoration that we offer, a body off restoration. That means that we have gone over this rig from top to bottom. It has been completely disassembled down to the smallest subcomponent and everything has been renewed. It's a very special, almost piece of art for an FJ80 and I hope you enjoy all of the details. Like all body off restorations, we start with the chassis and the drivetrain. This frame has been powder coated and all the suspension components were powder coated as well, except for things that have moving parts. Most of those are either zinced or painted. Believe it or not, this exhaust system is not custom. Every single piece of an FJ80 exhaust system can be obtained either from Toyota or aftermarket. This is literally a bolt together unit, including the new catalytic converters. One of the most time consuming parts of restoring the underside of an 80 series or any Land Cruiser wagon like this is while you have the body off, you have to scrape off all of the original factory goo that was there and prep it for a better quality two-part polyurea spray liner, in this case, Line-X. All of the hardware on the undercarriage and throughout the entire vehicle has been re-zinked and it really results in a beautiful undercarriage. This Land Cruiser received a two and a half inch Old Man Emu lift and a set of 285-75R16s are on top of the factory restored wheels. Other additions to the build that we were able to add are an ARB bumper in the front and worn winch, a set of Slee rock sliders that act as steps and they're really, really nice, and also a Slee rear bumper. A Safari snorkel handles the air intake to the factory 1FZFE. As odd as it is, the grill and headlight surrounds for an FCJ80 are available new from Toyota, but you can't get headlights. These are the original headlights restored to look new. We topped all of that off with an easy on K9 roof rack. Under the hood of this Land Cruiser is a factory new 1FZ FE Toyota Straight 6. What that means is that we obtained a short block new from Toyota, which is still available, and also a new head, and then any other engine component that was available new from Toyota was purchased. Everything else was refurbished, and all combined, that works out to be about the newest 80 series drivetrain imaginable. The inside of this Land Cruiser received the same level of restoration. Of course, it's got all new leather, The dash has been re-vacuum formed by JustDashes.com. The steering wheel and shifter knob are both covered with hand-stitched leather. And a new suede headliner and carpet with Dynamat have been installed. Of course we upgraded the audio to a double-din Pioneer head unit and all new speakers. Did you know that you can buy the side view mirrors brand new from Toyota for an 80 series? They're usually broken internally and they're available and they even come painted the factory color. Essentially, if you can buy an 80 series part new from Toyota, we bought it and installed it on this vehicle. It is virtually brand new from top to bottom. You know, we love these cars. In fact, we love all vehicles. And so every once in a while, we see something that just shouldn't have been done. And that's why we like to say, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. So this stop it is about shock washers. We see this all the time and it drives me insane. There's the right way and a wrong way to put shock washers on and I'm gonna show you right now. 
So these are shock washers. These are brand new OEM Toyota shock washers, which you can get from Toyota, by the way. And you'll notice that they are definitely concave shaped. They've got sort of a bowl, like, you know, this would hold water if it didn't have a hole in it. That concave shape needs to go in towards the shock bushing, like these are installed. That's the way Toyota does it. That's the way it should be done, because that way, as the axle moves back and forth with suspension flex, the shock is gonna be allowed to rock in here without the edge of the washer contacting the body of the shock. Please make sure you're putting your shock washers on the correct way, not like they are on that rig across the shop that we're gonna go see right now. So this FJ60 we're tearing down for a body off restoration, but I can tell you whoever put these shock washers on had no washer etiquette whatsoever. As you can see, this is an OEM shock washer, but it's installed backwards. And then in some crazy fashion, whoever did this, decided to drill a hole through the bolt and safety wire it on there. I'm guessing airplane mechanic. But you'd think the guy that was this thorough would know better than to put the shock washer on backwards like that. And if you look at the other side shock, similar problem. Didn't have the right washer for the outside, but the inside shock washer is on inside out. And you can tell by the gap right there, when this suspension moves, that's gonna contact the body of the shock. But there is one exception though. On the top of a post shock like this, the shock washer is actually cupping the bushing. There's no way that it's ever gonna come down and contact that surface though. So on the post end of a shock, cup the bushing. On the eye end of a shock, definitely. Shock washers go away from the bushing. That's your stop it. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> So you hear me say this all the time, never paint anything that's bolted to something else. If you're doing that, you're just not gonna produce a quality product, right? This is an example of a non-quality restored windshield frame. Let me show you what's happening here. So first of all, the brackets that hold the, uh, in this case, soft top frame um, were on there when they painted it, and that's rust underneath there. Of course, all the bolts broke off. Um, also, they painted these clips and the screens for the, uh, for the front vent in place, and they just don't look right, right, if they're painted like that. These come off really easy. You can have the screens powder coated. They didn't zinc uh, that, which is a super easy thing to bring some quality. Oh, look at this one I noticed, same time. Just painted over all of these clips for the wiring harness. Never paint stuff that's bolted to something else. But you end up with a non-quality product. One more thing, you can tell from the front here, this is the strip that held the rubber gasket, which was also the hinge. So they must have painted this in place. And anytime you're doing that, you're gonna have a line, a hard paint line that is a place where paint's gonna peel off later. Plus, there's just rust under there. So let me show you a quality way to do the exact same thing. So you can see on this replacement windshield frame, which we've installed, by the way, because the old one didn't have provisions for defrost, uh, that we painted all of the vent pieces separately. There's a new rubber gasket there that acts as the hinge for that. Then on the inside, we did just what they should have done. We've gone ahead and re the mechanism for the vent. You can see that the screens and the clips for the screens were individually powder coated black, so they look better. And up top, we restored the wiper motors, of course, but all of the individual clamps for the wiring harness are redone, as are the screws, and it's just so much cleaner of a product that didn't even really take that much longer to do. That's the way to do things, quality. Take them apart, restore every little piece, put them back together, and it's fun. It's totally fun. Really fun? It's really fun. How fun? Like, you know when you used to put puzzles together with your grandmother? Like that kind of fun, except for it's your puzzle, and then when you're done with it, you get to drive it. How cool is that? Oh, man. Hey, here it is, baby. This is a brand new 55 gallon drum of Evapo Rust. What do we do with this? And in this quantity, that's today's tech tip. Let's go talk about it. So this is our zinc prep area. And that big drum that we looked at outside, that is Evapo Rust. That is the second part of what we do to prep all of our bolts. You guys know about our zinc game. You see all of the shiny bolts and fittings and tubes and brackets and springs that you see. This is how we get them really nice. First thing you do is you have to take the rusty painted car key bolts and you soak them in. Well, hi, Chad. You soak them in this horrible, terrible chemical. This is Chem Dip and it's meant for cleaning carburetors. 
it's very, very, very bad for you. So you don't want to ever get it on your hands and you have to dispose of it properly. So that's the important part. But these bucket, buckets usually come with a dipping basket. And what we do is we take the bolts and we dip them in the Kim dip. That is gonna remove, these are bolts that hold uh, an inner fender onto an outer fender. And they've already begun to, I think these went in this morning. Most of the paint and uh, liner and, and uh, rubber eyes undercoating that were on them is almost already off. So once they get processed that, they get rinsed, and then they go into the evapo rust. Evapo rust is not like Kim Dip. This thing is, it's completely harmless. I don't know if I drink it, but it definitely doesn't hurt to get it on your hands. So once the bolts are clean from the Kim Dip, you put them in evapo rust, and really, almost no matter how rusty they were, they always come out looking like this, nice and clean. Uh, very, very often, the guys will, when we organize a, uh, a vehicle's fasteners into bins like you can see all these these are all empty the other ones are all on the shelves but these are used very often they'll just take the chem dip or the after the bolts come out of chem dip they'll be reorganized and then they just pour these plastic trays full, full of evapo rust just like that and then rinse the bolts off one more time and they're ready for zinc just like this basket we started with evapo rust amazing invention Stop it! Stop it! First of all, never use more than one washer stacked together. You see that all the time when people are trying to make spacers and they stack washers together as shins. A lock washer and a flat washer is okay. More than one flat washer and you're in the middle of a huge stop it right there. But let's talk about the anatomy of a washer for a second. So. You will notice if you look really close that these washers both have ridges around both the outer diameter and the inner diameter hole and that's caused from stamping the washer. Some nice metric washers like this one even have a little number stamped in it or some letters in this case. But on this side of the washer, there's no ridges. It's just a much smoother edge. It's just a, it's just a, a property of how they make the washers, right? But washers need to be oriented the correct way. If you were gonna use this washer on a body part that's painted beneath it, if you put this side of the washer down against the paint and then tighten the bolt, you're gonna, that little ridge is gonna cut a ring down into the paint. And that is a potential for a paint problem later, a flaw. So if we're using uh, washers on a body part, we'll always install the washer, what I would actually consider to be upside down, but so the nice rounded forgiving edge of the washer is against the paint where it's less likely to scratch and cause problems. But on a chassis or in a bumper or something that's not a painted surface, I like to see the washers placed so that the right side of the washer, uh, like right side, wrong side of fabric, the right side of the washer is up because that's a more visually um, appealing look for a washer. Did you ever think that just a simple washer could be so complicated? Well, at least washers according to Jeremiah are, so stop using them incorrectly. Stop it, stop it! If you watch these episodes and been to our website, you'll notice that we've got a new section called the Parts Corner. That's right, and on the Parts Corner, we're mostly offering just used parts that we've collected over the years. But we also are just now starting to sell some of our own solutions to common land cruiser problems. And among those are a whole bunch of 3D printed parts. Check these out. Chandra has radio delete plate uh, that these are on uh, FJ40s that didn't come with stereos. She's got a door lock knob. Now these are commonly broken, and these come with the screw to replace your door lock knob. There's a scutcheons for headrests, door handles for early FJ40s. That's a tack mount that replaces the tack in an FJ60 if you're doing a V8 conversion, so you can put an aftermarket tack in there. There's an old light uh, knob replica. These things are impossible to find um, OEM, but the dash light or the little map light that goes, we even have a replica for that. And there's dozens of other parts on there. So if you need something like that, well, we might have it for you. Um, we'll be adding new 3D printed parts weekly. Thanks for watching this episode of Prophets Resurrection Land Cruisers TV. If you like us, click subscribe. Check out our Instagram at, at ProCruiser, 
our Facebook, Resurrection Land Cruisers, and our website, resurrectionlandcruisers.com. Good job. Thanks for watching. You ready? Yeah. You need to take your sweatshirt off so you match the car. Don't you care about my comfort? It's cold. There's no comfort in TV. Just ask Chris Rock. <laughs>